This so-called War of the Worlds series was bloody awful. How have the BBC managed to turn one of the greatest stories ever written into such boring drivel? I do not know. Like, I literally don't know how they managed to do that. I'm more impressed than anything. If I had to describe the series in one word, it'd be pretentious. But let me break down why I'd say this and the things I thought were ridiculous about this show. Firstly, the series seemed to focus way, way too much on the romantic storyline between the two main characters, George and Amy, who are a couple in Edwardian England practically committing bigamy. George is already married to a wife who has expressed a want for him to return to her, but the audience is for some reason expected to side with George in his having an affair with Amy. But this is pretty boring, menial stuff. I mean, the alien invasion hasn't even started yet, so fair enough. Focus on this domestic storyline for now, but this continues even after the invasion begins. It's literally a scene at the end of the first episode where Amy and George are reunited in the middle of a town being blown up by Martians. Everyone's running around like crazy and they literally stop in the middle of the street and have a conversation about George's wife. It's bloody moronic. I remember after watching the second episode thinking this feels like the writer wrote an Edwardian romantic drama, showed it to someone and they said, nice, hey, you know what'd be funny? What if War of the Worlds was going on in the background? And the writer goes, hey, yeah, that's a great idea. And he immediately gets on his high horse carriage to go and write it and his friends just left standing there like dude I was bloody joking anyway eventually I realize oh shit we better get out of this town that's literally being decimated by massive alien tripod things and so they get on a random horse that just happens to be heading towards him because nothing says romance like a horse and they get going but uh oh Amy sees her dog and says oh we can't leave him so George gets off his horse at least physically he remains on his mental high horse throughout the entire series and he goes to fetch Fido it just so happens that the mar Martian tripod comes at this specific time and fires his heat ray in such a way to separate George and Amy but unfortunately somehow misses George even though it literally looks right at him and speaks to him in a pale imitation of the iconic Spielberg tripod foghorn. Bloody hell, try saying that fast. Spielberg tripod foghorn, Spielberg tripod foghorn, fuck bloody hell. Now quite frankly I don't mind that George went to get the dog except literally nothing comes with this. The dog runs off because of the Martian, I don't think it's ever even mentioned again so George and Amy get separated for nothing basically. The second episode has this really ridiculous bit where George is wandering through the street looking for Amy and he comes across the British army. So he goes up to the top soldier guy, I can't remember what he was so I'll call him the colonel because that seems about right and I like KFC. So you've got this British army unit getting ready to fight the Martians and this idiot George comes up to the guy leading him and starts going on about Amy who he refers to as his wife even though she's only his wife in his overactive imagination. The colonel says no we haven't seen her but George in this street which tons of people have been running through, loads of random people have been killed and where the army is getting ready to face the greatest threat Britain has ever encountered, George thinks he's far too important and takes up the army's time and keeps going on about it, not taking no for an answer like a two year old. Have you seen my wife? No. Well you might have, she's ginger. I said no. She does this weird thing where whenever she's running in terror she has the happiest smile on her face. I already said no. Well yeah but she might have come through here. Eventually the colonel gets pissed off and points a gun at him and quite rightly so in my opinion George is a bloody self-absorbed asshole. But here's a terrible bit of writing for you. The colonel says to him at gunpoint, come with us, you need to do your duty for king and country like every good Englishman. And he basically recruits him. Okay this is ridiculous because the invasion literally started about 40 minutes ago. 90% of the country hasn't even heard anything's going on. British army hasn't even seen the Martians yet, let alone had a pop at them. But no, they're recruiting randos off the street as if they're in a bitter war that's been going on for years. Not only that, but they put him up front and centre ahead of uniformed actual soldiers and put him in charge of arming their cannon, while the actual soldiers stand around doing nothing. I think a colonel did it just to fuck with George for being the pain in the arse that he is. Naturally though, George of course appears to be literally the only random person they recruit because the plot didn't need anyone else in plain clothes to help out and they go off to find one of the Martian landing crafts to shoot the shit out of. Which brings me on to the CGI of the show. The CGI was alright, I suppose. They clearly put a lot of work and thought into the designs, like with the tripods. Personally, I prefer the more traditional style, but, you know, they did something different, so, you know, fair enough. The Martian landing crafts, though, are basically just giant Maltesers, and the visual quality of them was about as good as when Doctor Who did the same thing 13 years ago. Very little improvement, in my opinion. Anyway, the army shoot one of these Maltesers, but it takes no damage and starts floating up in the air, spinning around and killing a shitload of people. Except, of course, George, even though the army for plot reasons I guess literally put him right in front of it. Despite this, out of the entire army unit he's literally the only survivor from what I recall. Which brings me on to another ridiculous thing with this show. George survives practically everything.
living. He's always in the most precarious situations and everyone around him dies, but somehow he does this weird sort of chicken run and gets out safe and sound. Moving on, one thing I've noticed is that the series doesn't at all bother to explain so many things, at least clearly. I've never heard of a show having such disrespect of its own characters to a point that a lot of the ones end up joining the main group literally aren't even introduced. They literally didn't bother to introduce them. It literally just cuts to a scene and suddenly, oh look, there's some new characters that a main character has joined and knows, but we're not going to bother to explain who they are, how they ended up together or any of that. And naturally, these characters exist simply for the purpose of having someone to kill later. They might as well have just put in a load of Kennys, which leads me on to something that is probably one of the worst things about this series, and that's the fact that characters are so black and white, it's ridiculous. You've got so many characters in this show that are designed to be super arrogant and always wrong, so when they die, it's meant to be satisfying. That's so pathetic, really, because George and Amy are constantly made out to be right in anything they say or do, and the audience is expected to completely agree and side with them. Not only do I hate the fact that characters in a television show are meant to be so obviously wrong, but I equally hate the fact that the main characters are meant to be so obviously right, and these characters are either punished or rewarded in relation to this. The arrogant characters naturally are the first to die, and George and Amy, who go against the society of the time just in general, and have what some would consider modern views, contrasting with the stereotypically old-fashioned views of practically everyone else, constantly survive many ridiculous unsurvivable situations. They're all practically the definition of two-dimensional characters. The only one who wasn't as two-dimensional as a Looney Tune was Rupert Graves' character character Freddy, who plays George's brother. The reason he was the only good character was because he was the only balanced character. It was neither black nor white, it was neither self-righteous in the way George is, but also not arrogant like everyone else who dare opposes George and Amy. He was the only character who was balanced, and because of that, he was the only remotely realistic character, the only one that wasn't a caricature, and one of the few characters other than George and Amy who actually got development, but he was the only one who actually warranted it, in my opinion. Honestly, if it was all just this stuff, then maybe the series wouldn't have been so bad, but the linear story was continually interrupted by what I call the Tarantino effect. It's that thing they do where they keep skipping years ahead of time and showing you the future and then going back to the past. If done well, it's alright, but here it really slices up the story and takes you away from the action and it's super disconcerting. After the first episode, I heard that it was sort of suggesting that it'd have a different ending to the book, which I thought, oh okay, I usually dislike this sort of thing, I think it's a pretentious technique films do just because they think it's clever, but if they've got a good reason like that, then fair enough, because one of the big problems with adapting such a famous story is that a lot of people already know how it ends. But no, early on in the second episode, it's revealed that the ending is the same as the book and it's just showing you what happened in the future for no bloody reason. The future segments, of which there is a lot, are all boring and completely pointless. They add very little to the story, if anything, in fact, I'd argue they take away from it. At the start, I said I'd call this series pretentious and the reason being because it treats the audience like they're an idiot. The best example of this, I think, is when the show practically outright says that Martians are a metaphor for the British Empire conquering technologically inferior lands. Whereas the book has been interpreted by some as potentially being this, the writer of this adaption has no clue what subtlety is, and thinks that unless they explicitly state such things as opposed to hinting or suggesting it, the audience is too stupid to get the message and they need to have it hammered into them with a massive cricket bat. Instead of creating a story to make people think like the original was, the BBC has used this adaption to tell people what to think. It's pretentious, it's patronising, and it's a disgrace that they've used the War of Worlds name to promote this boring drivel they call a show. Because that's genuinely the only reason it's called the War of Worlds. They had absolutely no interest in telling the story of the War of Worlds. Scary Movie 4 did a better job at telling the story. They just wanted people like me who otherwise wouldn't have watched a generic show about Edwardian society to be interested in it. I did a rough estimate going through the episodes and established how much time was given to the War of Worlds actual story and how much was given to this romantic Edwardian drama, the story of George and Amy, which was clearly what the BBC actually wanted to give us. And from what I found, on average, only about 26 minutes of a 54 minute episode of the BBC's The War of Worlds was dedicated to the actual story of The War of Worlds. The other 28 minutes were of the story of Amy and George. Now, I'm not saying you can't do your own thing with an iconic story. It's not trying to tell the story of the book, it's its own adaption and that's fine. But if you do that, you better do a good job of it or it ends up being a mockery of the original tale. 
people. The final episode ends in a future segment set in a ruined England five years after the invasion, with a monologue from Amy that's as long and boring as a black asexual's dick. She starts off by saying to her five-year-old son, When I was little, people didn't look like us. People had brown skin and wore such colourful clothes and were so happy. What? I feel like there's a throwaway line in the first episode that I missed where she says she grew up in Africa or something because this felt incredibly random. Even the kid was thinking, what the fuck is she going on about? I could say more about this, but never mind. Having gone on and on about the negatives of this program, I feel like I should at least talk about some of the good aspects of this show. Well, that's the end now. There were good things about it. For starters, it was only three episodes long. I appreciate that because I probably wouldn't have bothered to watch any more. The last episode was super hard to get through. I did like the effect of the heat ray. The way people seemed to set a light on fire and evaporate was quite a good effect. I'd also like to add that there were clearly a lot of people who that worked hard on making this show and I'm not criticising literally everyone that worked on it. I mainly have quarrel with whoever was in charge of the writing and creative output of it. The people that steered it in the direction that they did. I bet even if you took all three hours of this show, cut it down, edited it and rearranged it, it could actually be decent. I'm actually really tempted to do that myself, someday I might give it a go. Sort of like a phantom edit version. Let me make something clear though, when I criticise the characters, I'm not criticising the actors themselves. I find it difficult to criticise acting, and Robert Carlyle didn't really have a massive presence on the show for me, which is surprising. Which is why I haven't bothered to mention him so far. The actors playing arrogant characters were very good at playing arrogant characters, even though I disagree with the nature of the existence of those characters. As I said, Rupert Gray was terrific, definitely the only good character on the show, and I guess I'll end it on a high with that. Wait, oh bloody hell, the Americans and the French are made an adaption of War of the Worlds as well? Was this one going to be a commentary on social justice or something?